Jared Spool is a legendary UX guru who's now training the next generation of UX leaders in his online school, Leaders of Awesomeness. Jared and I have been friends for many years and we've discovered we have a lot in common because UX design, product design, and game design all have the same underlying job, which is to create a great customer experience. Here are five pearls of wisdom from Jared's recent VIP session in our certification masterclass. If you're building an innovative new product, game, or service, this is for you. The most advanced ideas in UX design always happen first in games. Listen in as Jared explains why. I've always thought that the way UX was done in games was what we should be doing in other types of applications. I remember saying years ago that if we just added a high score file to Excel, we'd see a jump in productivity. And what I realized was that because the player in the game world is so central to the success of the game and keeping them playing is so central, there are these fundamental ideas that are really valuable to thinking about how do you not at a surface level like gamification, but how do you at a deep level build something in that really gets people attracted to continuing to interact and build and learn and grow and all the things that happen in games. One of the most important goals for product designers is driving long-term retention. Here's how Jared thinks about customer loyalty. Technically, I'm a member of Disney Plus, but I don't think of myself as a member. I think of myself as a subscriber. I am renting their bits. So far, they've captured my dollars for bits. But I'm also a member of my local public television station. And I've been a member of my local public television station for years because I support what they do. Meaning in general happens when something I do benefits others. So by my supporting public television, I am allowing public television to do things for people who couldn't support them. And that to me is meaningful. And I get very excited when I hear the different ways they use my money. So I would look for whether you want to go down the bit renting model or you want to go down the connection model and where is meaning. How do you create a long-term vision for user experience that stretches years into the future? Here's how Jared does it. We can think of a vision as a flag in the sand. It might be five to 10 years in the future. A lot of people do this as a vision of this is what our product will look like. But I like to have our vision be purely about the experience because the product 10 years from now, it's not going to look anything like it looks today. We can come up with that experience by looking at what the current experience is like on a timeline that goes from frustration to delight of what it's like to do a thing. And I can ask the question, well, what would it look like if it was delightful all the way across? If this is where we're going to be in 10 years, what does that mean we have to be in five years? And then how about the two and a half year mark? What's the experience vision look like there? I start with where I want to get to, and then I work my way backwards to figure out how I'm going to get there. To build great products, you need people from many different departments working closely together. Here's how Jared thinks about building cross-functional teams. If we talk about roles not as designated by HR, but as positions on the team right now, and that roles come with responsibilities and certain activities, I'm all for that distinction. If you walk into a Michelin star kitchen, and if you just looked around at what was happening, You'd see that people have very distinct roles, that the person who's working the grill is doing a set of activities and they are responsible for a set of things. The person who's doing expediting has a different set of activities, a different set of responsibilities. But if you go back another night, those roles still exist. Different people are doing them. And the person who was the grill chef last time is now making desserts. And the guests never know the difference. That ability to switch and take over a new role, that is critical to cross-functional work. Jared and I both know that the best way to learn is by doing. 
Here, Jared explains how his Leaders of Awesomeness program is different from traditional corporate training. Companies don't pay for training because they want their people trained. People want training because they want to see the change in the organization as a result of the training. So we focus on the change and the change happens all the way through. So if you come in with the mindset of this is training, you will actually be very frustrated because there's very little training that's happening. We're rolling up our sleeves. We're just doing and we're experimenting and we're trying things out. And then we backfill with theory and knowledge and experience and all the things that you would expect from training. So you learn a ton, but you learn while doing. And that's a very different approach to corporate training. So there you have it. Five pearls of wisdom from UX guru, Jared Spool. I love how Jared goes beyond the buttons and boxes of screen design and gets into finding deep customer meaning and designing products that meet those needs. To learn more about our training programs and get access to VIP guests like Jared and Gary Tan and other luminaries, go to gamethinking.io slash programs. The link is in the description. For more wisdom from Jared, check out these videos. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you soon.